We're back again, baby. I'm Pablo with Ethan here and another week of news and updates from the Cinematech world. I have a shirt of things that people like, so they like me too. I can relate to the audience. That's, that's nice. Go back in your corner. <laughs> First, GoPro has released the new Hero 11 Black and Black Mini. The biggest changes include a larger sensor that now records at an 8 by 7 aspect ratio at 5.3K and up to 60 frames per second. Bitrate encoding was also upgraded to 10 bit and stabilization was much improved. Not to be outdone, though outdone it was, DJI released the Action 3. It's about 100 bucks cheaper than the GoPro and features a slightly larger sensor, thus in theory, better low light performance. However, it does not record in 10 bit and it still records at a measly 4K. To my eye, the stabilization also looks not as good as the GoPros, but I'm blind, so who knows. Check out our good friend Potato Jet for a comprehensive comparison on both cameras. You saw him once and called him Potato. He, he waved though. To no one's surprise, Fujifilm also released a new camera. Last week, really. Fuji? The X-H2. It features a new 40.2 megapixel X-Trans sensor. Neural features include its ability to have an electronic shutter that goes as slow as one, 100, 80,000th of a second? It's really fast, okay? <laughs> Video-wise, it shoots up to 8K and 30p at 10 bit ProRes. It's the first APS-C camera to do it. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Last on the camera release train use, the Zcam E2 F6 Pro, plus rewards. It's the same as the E2 E6, technically. Uh, the sensor, resolution, recording capability is all the same. But now it comes with extra things. Namely, the included 5-inch touchscreen monitor and an SDI video output. I'm sure it has other things, but it's the same. We like things. <laughs> On the social media front, Instagram just can't catch a break. An internal document shows that not only it's viewership down month over month in Reels, but there's also no engagement whatsoever from its users in Reels. And just to rub extra salt on that wound, more than one third of Reels published are just TikTok reposts. That seems low to me. I think the other two thirds must be repost of the first one third. <laughs> their solution? Well, their newest idea is to test the repost feature, like the retweet button. Because Twitter is definitely the thing worth emulating. You know when you're editing your video on your favorite NLE? No. Don't you just wish you could sometimes just type out the next tool you need instead of just using the one key shortcut? Well, Runaway has you covered. Is that sarcasm? Yes. No. They teased a new feature, text-to-video. Clearly a reference to AAR generators, though their tool does not generate video as you might hope. It just calls forth tools, some of which use AI and have impressive results, but they're not particularly new. Who's gonna use this? Probably the same people who use Siri to text, even though they have their hands free. You're a monster and I hate you. <laughs> Speaking of nothing new, here's Ethan with more movie news. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, it's Ethan back at it again with a lot to cover, so we'll get right into it. This week, we'll start off with the biggest news of the D23 Expo. The Disney Super Convention returned this week after being on hold for the pandemic, and they laid out their plans for the company's 100-year celebrations. With its return came news of the future release schedules of Disney, Pixar, Lucasfilm, and Marvel. With so much more announced, we've decided to just choose our favorites now and talk about the rest as they become more available. Disney Studios started off the event with its live action department announcing Mufasa, The Lion King prequel, the trailer for The Little Mermaid, and Disenchanted for Disney+. Plus. Disney Animation showed off the new trailer for Strange World and announced their next film, Wish, about the origins of the wishing star. Pixar followed up with a first look at the new original films Elemental and Elial, along with announcing Inside Out 2. Lucasfilm countered with an exclusive trailer of Indiana Jones 5 and a new trailer for the Willow sequel, also titled Willow. In the Star Wars department, trailers for Andor, The Bad Batch, Tales of the Jedi, and the only thing keeping Star Wars on live support since the sequel trilogy, The Mandalorian Season 3 trailer dropped. And finally, Marvel rounded us out with new trailers for Ant-Man 3, Werewolf by Night, Secret Invasion, Black Panther 2, along with the casting announcements of Captain America 4 and the Thunderbolts. Of course, like we said, there's a lot more news to cover, but we'll cover that as more information gets released. We barely even mentioned Disney Plus or the theme parks. 
The biggest news, however, hold on to your emotions, Dr. Jones, is the photo of Harrison Ford with Kehu Kwan as the Temple of Doom cast reunites with a very poignant I love you Indy from Kehu Kwan's Instagram. I choose to remember this as the last happy Indiana Jones memory before they last Jedi Indy and de-age him into oblivion, then kill him off at the end with time travel so they can reboot the female Indiana Jones franchise. Because why not? We can't have anything original. I'm so done. You know what wasn't announced at D23? Any new Star Wars movies, like I care anymore. A few years back, Wonder Woman director Patty Jenkins announced her new Star Wars movie Rogue Squadron, based on the beloved video games and books too much fanfare at Star Wars Celebration. But after reported creative differences, she left the project and just days after the convention ended, it was officially canceled. Like the Obi-Wan movie, the Boba Fett movie, the original episode 9, Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon the Han Solo sequels, uh, Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy, Good riddance. and the original Lucas sequel trilogy. There's only six Star Wars movies, damn it, six. Three. And Rogue One. Four. <laughs> and finally, to all the film nerds and students who are learning of the French New Wave in class, French Swiss film director Jean-Luc Goddard has passed away peacefully at his home at the age of 91. The pioneer in the French New Wave movement was known for changing the face of cinema as we know it with his experimental filmmaking and for giving film professors whole lesson plans just based on one film. Filmmakers around the world have taken to social media to voice their condolences, like this tweet from Cornetto Trilogy director Edgar Wright. Rest in peace, you magnificent Frenchman. Rest in peace. And now to the box office reports. <laughs> This week has Barbarian at the top spot, followed by Bullet Train and Top Gun Maverick, still at the top three. Still. Enough already! <laughs> and finally, this week in film history, The Outer Limits premiered on ABC TV, four years after The Twilight Zone, taking a harder science fiction edge and ran for two seasons. I want to thank this show for controlling my TV and for not throwing doors at the intro. Reaching out from the world that lies... The show's about the spooky shit. Well, that's all we have to report for this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us next week when more products will be released and Hollywood continues to make things. And I guess we'll watch them. Subscribe! <laughs> oh, what? Subscribe. Oh, subscribe. We have a subscribe sign. Subscribe, please. Look at it. You want to know how we built this? Stick around. We have a video for it. Click the bell. Click the bell. Subscribe. <laughs>